of Grapevine Canyon, sitting under an ancient oak tree, there stands a marker that is inscribed I.H.S. Peter Lebec, killed by a ex-bear, October 17, 1837. There is a town named Lebec, which is up uh, by the top of the grapevine near Fraser Park, and it was named after Peter Lebec. We know so little about this guy, and yet he was there, he was found, and somebody honored him enough to put an inscription in a tree which lasted for, for decades. Really, the only thing we're sure of is that he was killed by a grizzly bear up in what is now Fort Tejon in 1837. A book titled The Life and Death of Peter Lebec is the only book ever written about the subject. Through this book, as well as speaking with historians, I will break down this strange piece of history. Because this story is generated from the inscription, I visited the Kern County Museum to see the original carving for myself, almost 180 years after its engraving. But first, let's start with the book. The first person to have found the carving was an unidentified man who happened upon the oak tree in 1842. Then in July of 1847, Henry W. Bigler and party stumbled upon the grave. It was in 1874 that the Lebec tree started to receive national attention. Back to July of 1847, three members of a Mormon battalion found the carving while en route to gold country. Henry W. Bigler in his journal recalled finding the carving and is quoted saying, nearby was a skull and bleached bones of a grizzly bear. This was a very odd statement that didn't quite seem to add up. It's a stretch that the bear bones would have been found next to the man, because most likely the bear would have been the winner in this struggle and probably did not die next to Peter Lebec. So I doubt that the bones would have been there unless somebody was right there to kill the bear after Peter Lebec was killed. In 1853, Lieutenant Robert S. Williamson was leading a government expedition as part of the effort to find a route for a transcontinental railroad. Lieutenant William P. Blake, a geologist and mineralogist for the expedition, notes on September 29, 1853, an unusually large population of grizzly bears in the area. Edward Fitzgerald Bill became aware of the Lebec tree in 1854. It wasn't until 1889 that the peak of this strange story was reached. The Foxtail Rangers was a group of men, women, and children from Bakersfield. The Foxtail Rangers came out to Fort Tejon in 1889 on their first excursion. They were doing a picnic, and at that time, one of the members of the group happened to notice this oak tree which had a slot in it, and they could see a little letter in the slot. Because of that, they went, they went ahead and, and removed some of the bark off the tree, and thereby found this intriguing inscription that we know today. A year later, Edward F. Beale, who's one of the legendary figures in Southern California history, asked this group, the Foxtail Rangers, to go back up to Fort Tejon and see if they could find the body of Peter Lebec. And indeed, they did find a body. It was four feet below the ground. It was missing both hands and feet and the, the right forearm and had two fractured ribs. It was a six foot tall man and they've determined that this was most likely Peter Lebec who had been attacked by the grizzly bear. It was an unusual thing for a group of men, women, and children to do, almost macabre in a sense, but I guess they had this determination that they wanted to honor this man, so they wanted to find him and, and, and make sure that he was buried properly. The findings of the Foxtel Rangers gained national attention, some of which was sensationalized. The El Paso Herald was the most outrageous example of false reporting. Here's an excerpt from their article on October 2nd, 1901. They discovered a ghastly scene. For about three feet below the surface, the man and bear were found, both buried in the same grave. The heads of the man and bear were reversed and a blanket was used as a shroud. On the man's breast were his spurs and his six shooter. After reading this, I thought to myself, why would this event be taken out of context to such an extent? So as to why these legends might have developed and why this story gained such interest even outside our local area, I think it has to do with the time period and the interest in the old Wild West. Here was a man who was a mountain man, a fur trapper, and had this incredible mystery about him. I think this was a, one of those archetypical stories that, that, that excited people's imaginations at that time. 
After looking over our timeline of events and how the story of the Lebec tree was discovered, who exactly was Lebec? Where did he come from? And why was he in this area? Over the years, there's been a variety of sources of speculation as to what he might have been doing here. Uh, there was one source that thought he might be Pierre Lebec, who was a friend of Napoleon. Uh, another source thought that he might have been a uh, Louisianan of Acadian descent who lived in Texas and during the Republic of Texas might have come out here to stir up trouble with Indians and Mexicans for the, so that the Republic of Texas could possibly take over the territory here. Another source had him in a gang of soldiers of fortune who were invited out here from New Mexico to protect the area here from troops from somewhere in Northern California. They thought he was part of this band uh, as a fur trapper. The theory that is probably most feasible, that it seems to be the one that we say the most in our local literature, has him as a fur trapper, probably of French Canadian descent who may have come down with an expedition from Fort Vancouver with the Hudson Bay Company to Southern California in, in the late 1830s for fur trapping. And they may have been invited here or allowed permission here by the governor, Juan Alvarado, to come down here and do that. After all the speculation as to why Lebec was in the area, what exactly makes people think he was killed by a grizzly bear? And what clues do we have that Lebec was really French Canadian? We believe that Peter Lebec was killed by a grizzly bear based on a clue that's in the inscription in the oak tree up in Fort Tejon, uh, which was an X. Uh, he was said to have been killed by an X bear. And it turns out that in California at the time in the 1830s, uh, grizzly bears were referred to as X bears because of a light fur on their backs that formed the shape of an X. There's a few other hints on the inscription in the tree that, that helps us to try to figure out who this man was. One of those inscriptions at the very beginning is the letters IHS. And IHS was a common inscription used for Catholic persons, which was stood for the first three letters of Jesus in Greek. So from that, we, we surmise that he was probably Catholic and therefore most likely French Canadian. we may never know the exact circumstances surrounding the violent death of Peter Lebec. We can only piece together the facts and try to make sense of the enigma that is the story of a man killed by a bear. Thus ends a strange and eventful history.